and so the announcements for this week. There will be no band practice tomorrow. As we expect the arrival of our baby, we may not be available at short notice for meetings. There will be somebody available in the hall in case messages are not managed to get around. And in that instance, there may be a prayer meeting or opportunity for fellowship. Next week is Together 2022, where there will be a gathering of salvationists from across the territory, meeting together, sharing and commissioning of the new lieutenants, as well as time of worship. Please continue to pray for this event, that people will be blessed and may be challenged by God to respond. Some of the meetings will be live streamed and the link is in the Sunday link if you'd like to watch that next week. There is a new flower list and holiness display table list on the board. If you'd like to contribute in that way, please pop your name on the sheet and tick whether you are providing flowers or a display. As of tomorrow, I will be on maternity leave with a week to go before our due date. I will try and forward any emails to the Stornoway account. However, your first port of call will be Chris or the local leadership of the Corps for any queries. And though I am on maternity leave, I will still be attending the Corps in my soldier capacity once things have settled down. And as yet, we don't know when that is going to be. As it is the summer and with a limited programme, I encourage you all to just do as you have been, supporting each other, giving each other phone calls, meeting up for a coffee and using this time to grow with each other. As we head into the autumn, there will hopefully be a number of activities, the use of volunteer, and these will be discussed in an open core meeting towards the end of the summer holidays. Just now we're going to listen to our Bible reading from Matthew chapter 19, verses 13 to 15. It's just a short passage from Matthew 19, verses 13 to 15. Then the people brought the little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked them. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. When he had placed his hands on them, he went from there. Amen. Now you may be wondering why I have chosen this short passage as a focus today, but the truth is there are other examples of scripture that run alongside this. However, I was struck by the way Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. We are all children of God. We should all feel we can approach our Saviour and have the hurdles of tradition or practices denying that opportunity removed. The discussions we had as part of our Theology of the Cross were amazing and it was really encouraging to see so many of you contribute your suggestions alongside your comments from the Missional Journal which have prompted really interesting reading. But we made it clear from the start this is not just a paper exercise, but it is a working document that is meant to help us seek God's purpose for us as a core and us as a follower. So let us cast our minds back to May, all those months ago. We had the cross at the centre, surrounded by the chairs, and Christopher highlighted the following phrase, crux probat omnia, the phrase meaning the cross tests everything. This is our focus. We discussed the words used to describe what the cross means and we had a number of suggestions given by ourselves followed by lots of explanations. And using these words we compared them to the words you use to describe the core and the community from the missional journal conversations which we had way back at the start of the year. Many of the community words describe the need for a place, a destination or a venue for activities or conversations to happen. This combined with the post-Covid reactions to isolation and loss show there is a need to have a space which could be our hall for activities. In the core description they suggested words such as sanctuary, meeting place and welcome. 
highlighting the drive to make the hall more than just a worship location, but a space that could have a variety of uses. It suggests a great sense of communication, the community wanting to chat to members and the core wanting to listen and respond, building up those relationships. We have produced a sheet showing the journey from the word suggested to where we are currently with our vision statement. There is much more detail in this document for you to read and discuss over the next few weeks and you should all have received one of those as you came in this morning. From these words, we move from theology to culture to programme. As we narrowed down the list of words by categorising and contrasting, we felt that the word that was the foundation for our next stages was acceptance. Now this may seem a strange word to choose, to have come from the cross. However, we feel this resonates best with what our core is all about. Many of you have found acceptance here as part of the congregation. We are made up of people from all walks of life, different Christian journeys, exploring faith for the first time, struggles or grievances, making you find a place to come to. Stornoway Corps is not like the next Salvation Army Corps, and nor should it be, because it is made up of people who have been accepted for who they are and for what they are going through right now with no pressures to be anything other than to come and seek God. We felt that when we arrived, and I know that many of you have felt this, when you come into this building for the first time, that you have felt welcomed. You have felt accepted by God's people for who you are. Now that doesn't mean that we are perfect, but then no one is. That doesn't mean that we will not face challenges along the way. But what it does mean is that we will see the honesty, the care and the kindness indicated in our core words, living out. Acceptance highlights that we are all at the same level. We are all loved by God. And this word is integral to our development over the next few months, as it will underpin everything we do as we serve from this place. The cross tests everything. And Jesus accepted his fate for us. Now there's a lot more information in the document that we have created. However, this morning, I'd like to reveal the proposed mission, vision statement that we have come up with. We will be a supportive fellowship that knows what it is to be accepted and welcome those who want to belong to God's church within the Western Isles. It would be great to have discussions about this as we explore over the next few weeks. But this is what we feel should underpin our activities in the week, our worship and our evangelism. There is going to be some movement maybe in the wording and discussions will happen around this. But we feel this is a good starting block to shape our ministry. So just now we're going to share in a time of prayer to focus on this idea of acceptance. Let us share in the beautiful chorus, Psalm 330, as we are gathered, Jesus. <laughs> 